Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we're going to show you how you can self-host change detection um, as well as use it to kind of monitor changes on a website. Um, there's a few various use cases that you can use for this, obviously. Um, the one that usually comes to mind for me would be like, I want to buy something on Amazon, want to kind of monitor, you know, changes to pricing and, you know, buy it at the cheapest price, right? Um, so you can definitely do it for that. But also if you're like trying to figure out, you know, if something has changed on a website, what has changed over the course of time, that also works with this too. So um, you don't need to self-host this. You can actually go to their website, changedetection.io and use, use it where they host it. But we're gonna have some fun with our YouTube channel. We're gonna self-host it and then show you how you kind of use it a little bit. So let's get started. All right, so uh, to get started, um, we all need to create a, a VM um, to make sure that we can run it on something, right? Um, so to do that, I have pretty much all the automation to create it set up. I just need to do the prereqs. So the first prereq is to create the DNS for this so that essentially when the VM gets spun up, it has an IP that is associated with it with a DNS record. Um, so in this case, we're gonna create it and we're gonna just say change, um, let's go up detection. Uh, we will set the IP for this entry to be just the next one up. So 1.94. So we'll save this and merge it. Add change detection commit. So that will automatically go and populate my DNS and um, entries and essentially do all the magic and make it work, which is great. So um, if you're interested, uh, I think it's earlier in my home lab series video, um, it will show you how you can use GitLab to essentially create a CI that will allow it to push out a file um, and essentially restart the DNS services that I have. So to make that work. The other thing that we'll need to do here is uh, update our Ansible playbooks repo here so that we uh, add the host name into our inventory. Um, this makes it so that essentially when our Ansible or AWX runs, it will be like, oh, hey, yeah, I know that that's going to be a machine that is based off of that host name and it will work. So we'll add change detection to it here and we'll commit it. Change detection. So those are essentially the two prereqs that I have. Um, if you're interested in how the CI works, um, it's in one of my videos um, back in there. I, I named it probably something that would make sense. Um, if I didn't, let me know in the comments and I can definitely point you to the right video. Um, so from here, we will log into our AWX. AWX is essentially a control panel to um, use as a nice GUI interface to kind of run your Ansible playbook templates. Um, in this case, I have a full on workflow that will create my VM, patch it, install Docker and Docker Compose, create certs on my CA certificate server, um, and set up Nginx reverse pro Nginx reverse proxy on my server so that I can host TLS essentially. Um, and that's all created in these steps. Um, those steps are actually part of my automation series playlist. So feel free to check that out. It's actually a lot of fun to do. Um, I'm hoping to do a little bit more in that automation series, but I haven't thought of other things so far. So what we'll do is we'll add the host name, which we'll call change detection, the IP that we updated in our DNS. So that's the 194 um, dragon. And this is what will be uh, named on my VMware server and then our proxy address. So what we'll do actually change detection and actually go to the GitHub and go to Docker. So with the reverse proxy, I need to know what port it will be running on. So it looks like it's going to be 5,000. We can actually look at the Docker compose, scroll down, read it. Yeah. So it'll be listening on 5,000. So we will want to redirect. TLS to uh, localhost on 5000. So we'll do localhost 5000 and next. All right, so from here, it'll go through the steps that I explained. Um, I'm not gonna go through these steps in this video, but if you're interested in each individual step, 
please go check out my automation series video. Um, and if you're interested in like more steps on what I could do, like what other things that you'd like to see or create it, let me know in the comments. So, but from here, we'll let it uh, go through. It'll take a few minutes. So I'll fast forward the video um, once we can log into the server. So. All right, so now it has finished completing the VM, which means we should be able to actually SSH to the box now. So we can SSH root at change detection dot dragon dot local. We'll accept the host key, type in our password, and then we essentially now can do whatever we want. Um, so just to kind of preference a little bit, we do have Docker installed and Docker Compose installed also, which will be important. Um, I think it's version like this or capital V. It's been a while. <laughs> there we go. Double hyphen versions. Um, so that is definitely a prereq. So if you have, you know, issues with installing Docker or Docker Compose, uh, feel free to check out my like earlier videos where I actually go through each individual step um, or the automation series playbook video where it will go through how each step is ran in the playbook. So. From there, what we can do is actually now just copy this Docker Compose file here. So we can on GitHub get the raw. We'll create the file, call it docker-compose.yaml, and paste it all in. So um, just to kind of preface a little bit of you know how this all works. Um, actually, they have actually Nginx also for for that. Um, let me let me save this here. Cat doc compose. Um, so we'll scroll up here and we can see that it will create the service. There's, there's a lot of ha um, comments out here, which you don't actually need to change. It's more if you want very specific um, configurations, but the important part is it'll create a container for change detection. Um, it'll open up on port 5,000. Um, and that's really kind of what you need to know unless you're planning to like use, you know, like browser, you know, settings or Chrome settings, stuff like that. Um, in this case, you can just leave it as default. So what we'll do here is do dot compose up and we'll do a hyphen D to detach. So it doesn't just spew out logs in the console as once it's ready. Um, once this is done, we will be able to go hit the browser and use it. So now. Uh, we can actually see, you know, do Docker PS. We can see that it is up and running, created six seconds ago, listening on port 5000. Now, because we have our engine X configured, we can actually do HTTPS. And then we can just go to change detection dot dragon dot local. And it will essentially do that redirect to the 5000 locally because it's reverses proxies. So you can see this is kind of like your, your default. This will look exactly very similar to if you were just on the website. Um, they do have a doc theme, which I love. We, we always do the doc theme. Um, but the important thing is how does, how does it actually work, right? So say for example, we got a site. We got like api.dragon.local. Um, and all this says is hello world. Nothing, nothing fancy, just hello world, right? Um, and I wanted to use this as an example because I needed something to actually change. So we're just doing something on our, our own home lab. So we'll add the link of the page. We'll add it to watch. And you can see now it's queued and looking for, um, it, essentially it's scanning the page right now. Um, so last check just now, um, really nothing, nothing to, you know, in particular. So nothing has changed because we haven't changed anything. So. What we'll do is open up another browser. We'll do root at api.dragon.local, type in the password, fail the password, type it in again. And what we'll do is update the page now. HTML um, index.tml. And, and instead of hello world, we can do like hello, um, dragon or something, you know, and then we'll restart the web service here. So now if I were to go to the page and reload, it'll say hello dragon instead of hello world. So that's, that's an obvious change. So what we can do here is actually hit recheck here and this will get queued up to be rechecked. And once it's rechecked, we can see, give it a second. 
that it actually changed. So you can see the last change was right here. Um, and you can actually go to it. And then you hit diff over here to see what changed. Now, obviously this is this is a one line change. So it, it got the whole, you know, first line, hello world, hello dragon. Um, so it essentially diffed it um, because I didn't actually enable the browser stuff. You don't see screenshots, um, but depending on what you want, you can you can enable that. Um, but yeah, so it's it's pretty simple. So you could do the exact same thing for like, say for example, you wanted to log into Amazon and you wanted to, you know, watch um, for, you know, equipment or, you know, accessories. You can definitely go, you know, paste in the link and just wait for it to change and see what changed and see, you know, what things on the page change. Um, I believe you can actually specify specifically like on the price. So like, say for example, if the description changed, you don't really care about that. Um, so I, I would have to play around with that, but I believe you can actually, they, they added it so you can actually watch like pricing too specifically. So, but if you're just looking for like a general, like, Hey, I want to know if anything on that page changed, you can just put in the link, click watch, call it a day and see when, when things last change. So, um, there you go guys. So you can test this out in your own home lab, have some fun or just use their hosted version. So. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.